G'day, Tragic here, and I'm just going to do my second deck building episode, and this time I'm going to be covering a two-player deck, so it's a dual deck, and like the way that I personally prefer to make decks is that I create them as a single deck that is designed to be run by two players. So let's just have a quick look at the stars, and that is the heroes. Now, this deck was originally created by a guy called Hilarious Pete. And if you don't know Hilarious Pete, you should probably uh, find him. He's on FFG, he's on Card Game Database, send him a PM and say thank you. He loves that stuff. He is the creator of the Strange Eons plugin for Lord of the Rings that allows people to create custom cards. He uses... Uh, he made the plugin from the PSD files from Gekoth or whatever his name is from, I'm pretty sure it's Gekoth or Geo Gekotheth or something like that. And he's a board game geeks guy and he made these PSD files of the cards. Hilarious Pete turned him in an Aeons plugin and basically the entire custom scene, the custom encounter deck scene for Lord of the Rings is from those two guys. So very, very big dudes in the community. Uh, send them their things. Anyway, this is a deck that he made called Brothers in Arms, which I've modified a bit for my own personal tastes. So let's have a look at this deck and uh, check it out, because it's actually quite a funky deck, and I really enjoy playing with it. So, firstly, it's called Brothers in Arms, and it's all about these two guys here. Now, these two guys, I'm going to uh, call them... Eladan and Elro here. Now, I might be pronouncing them wrong. I've been trying to work on my Lord of the Rings pronunciations. But anyway, these brothers, they buff each other when they're on the field. If you're going to run one of these heroes, you have to run two. So let's just have a quick look at what these heroes do. So basically, Elro here, when Eladan is on the field, he gets plus two defense. So even though he has one defense, he is actually defending for three. That's turn one, defense for three. That's pretty insane. So like if I if I just go to the deck editor and let's just set it to type hero and come down here and check out the defense, what do we have here? See so defense is at three. Denethor, he's the only hero that has three defense. And he's only got one will, one attack, and he's got three health. So this card is better in every way, except of course Denethor's ability is insane, especially with a UC on him. But you're not going to be using his defense if you're using his ability. That's the trick with this character. And it's actually a trick with a lot of characters, and I'll get to that in a second. So anyway, he's got plus three defense. I mean that is an amazing character. He's got four defense, so you know, he takes a he needs a good hit to kill. Terrific. Meanwhile, we have his bro over here, and he gets plus two to his attack. So he is actually attacking for three, okay? Uh, if you're wondering, when I, when I play my plugin, there's, I put in three counters, okay? Which are like generic, you can use them for whatever you want. But I like to use them, one of the things I use them for is, uh, you know, re re modifications to the health and defense and attack and will and stuff anyway whatever so he has uh i'll just i'll just you know, just for this particular case I'll, I'll put it down here okay so he's attacking for three and his brother's defending for three so they're very 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 strong and we do have legolas up here as well which means we have a turn one hitting for six and that's pretty impressive turn one we can hit for six Awesome. Okay, so what else have we got? Those guys are pretty self-explained. Bilbo, I've talked about many times. I think he is an absolutely insanely powerful hero. A lot of people look down on him because he doesn't exactly have the greatest stats, but his ability of drawing an additional card just makes decks run smooth. It's like the oil in the engine, you know what I mean? Awesome card. Uh... He's extreme, like, off the charts powerful in solo. Except in solo games, because the decks are trying to do so much, it's often understandable to try and swapping out for a hero that has some more utility besides his effect. 
But even so, in solo, he's off the chain. And in multiplayer, he's off the chain. I mean, you're drawing an extra card every second turn. I mean, it's, it's pretty good. Then we have Eowyn. Now, Eowyn is a contentious hero. There's been talk, you know, like on the FFG forum, I hear people going on about how Eowyn is like a trainings wheeled character and all this kind of stuff. And I think that's a bit ridiculous. I mean, she is extremely powerful. And if you don't want to use her, fine, don't use her. But saying that she is a ridiculously bad character is kind of strange to me. Uh, I think at four wheel, she is what I consider to be the perfect type of multiplayer card. And that is, she has a specific function and she's really, really, really good at it. Like, this deck, when, when this deck was first created, it was created with uh, Hilarious Pete, and Hilarious Pete created the deck using uh, Aragon, okay? So he had Aragon instead of Gimli. I've replaced, uh, let me just load that up. So he had Aragon instead of Gimli. Did that load? Oops, oops. Right. Uh, like, oh, I'm in test dummy. That's right. There we go. Okay, so he had Aragon instead of Gimli, okay? Now, let's have a look at Aragon. Aragon is 12, okay? So he bumps up the threat of this deck by, what, a le uh, three points. I mean, that's pretty, pretty majorly. But he has a willpower of two, an attack of three, a defense of two, and a hit points of five. They're all fantastic stats. But remember, if he's questing in Aragon's... Aragon has his untap ability, obviously. But if he's questing, he's also, uh, you know, not attacking. Unless, you, unless you're doing mana leak. You know, leaking out your, your resources. And what I'm trying to get at here is that heroes that have extremely well-rounded stats, like they have good stats and everything, you really can only use, you can usually only use one or two of them at a time. Two if you're lucky, usually only one. Actually, an, a better example is the one I was talking about before, which is Denethor. Denethor has a plus three defense stat, but you really are not going to be using this if you can help it, because most of the time you're going to be wanting to use his other ability. That's a fine example of a character that has a really good stat that you just never use. And that's why I think it's a lot better to have specialized characters. And Eowyn is pretty much the princess of that type of character. She is a quester, and that's what she's got, and you have questing covered. Or well, most of questing covered. You can just start questing, worry about everything else. You don't have to get anything on the field. And it really helps the deck to have a quit start. Plus, she's got low threat. I love this character. Next, we have... Legolas. I'll, I'll, go, I'll do him last. And lastly, we have Gloin. Now, Gloin is a sort of last-minute addition, and the only reason Gloin is in this deck is because I don't like Aragorn. I think he's too expensive for what he does, and also, we're going to be... Like, look at uh, uh, Elrohir's ability. You pay one to ready him, okay? Which means that we already have a leadership mana leak on this deck. Two is just too much. We're never going to be using him. When I played this game, I just never used Aragorn's untap ability, and I was just using him for questing, pretty much. And I'll get to why in a sec. Which means the only stat I was using from Aragorn was the plus two will. Okay? The plus two will. So I looked around, and I found another character that had plus two will, and had the resource icon that I was looking for. And Gloin fit the bill, and that's the only reason he's in there. Now, he does have four, while Aragorn has five, but all in all, I think Gloin is a good replacement for Aragorn in this deck. And of course we have Legolas, he puts on progress tokens, and and you know he's got range, extremely powerful character. Okay, so that they're the heroes. How does this deck function? And the deck is specifically designed mainly around a single combo. So if I just load up the 
the deck itself. Is this the that's the wrong one? Let me load up the right one. Is this the yeah. Okay, so let's just have a look at the deck itself. And oop, that's the wrong the wrong chick. Yes, this is actually an error in the Lackey plugin that I need to fix. See how it's these have the same titles. I haven't got around to fixing that. I'm using a early an early uh, version of this deck, but I'll get to that in a sec. Okay, there she is. Okay. So this deck focuses around this ally, and this is the core ally that the whole deck is really based around. And the way it works is, when she taps, she can choose a character, and note that it says character, it's very important, and that character gains Sentinel and plus one, okay? So, I mean, that is pretty insane effect. Sentinel and plus one. Okay, so she is a two-cost spirit, right? Which means that if things go according to plan, we can actually get her out, because we've got one spirit icon, on turn two. So on turn two, we actually have a four... a four defense sentinel that can untap and defend again. That's insanity, okay? That means you can tap, defend, tap, defend, tap, defend, tap, defend, and just defend everything, and then you kill using Legolas, who can attack to anywhere on the board with range. And that is where the deck is built. So if we look through the leadership cards that we have, we have, of course, Steward of Gondor. And Steward of Gondor is for this guy because we want resources to collect on him so he can multiple untap and defend. So it's tap, defend, tap, defend, tap, defend. So Steward of Gondor is the target for uh, Elro here, or whatever his name is. Then we also have a couple of these ranged because we want to get ranged as quickly as possible onto his brother. And then we have six attack that can go anywhere on the board. And that is pretty much the, the crux of the entire deck, is just built around those two particular concepts. We are trying to get Steward on El Rahir, and so he can tap and defend everywhere, and we're trying to get as arranged on his brother and everything else is really just designed to help with that deck so let's just have a quick look at the individual decks now so I'm just going to let me just uh, go new and we'll open up this uh, deck oh instant incidentally see how she has Aowen here this Aowen if you're playing a scenario that has this objective card, you cannot use her in your deck. And I do have a modification on Card Dame Database that is a slightly different. It doesn't have this combo, but it's still a very playable deck. So let me just make sure that we have the right Aowen in. Uh, there she is. Okay, and let's have a quick look at this deck. It's 51 cards. Okay. Right, so here's the deck. And as you can see, this is a little bit more expensive a deck than most people might be running. And what I mean by that is that it uses three copies of Core. Now, it's not hard to do without that you can make this deck quite comfortably with two copies of core and in most play most people that are running two player teams you each have a copy of core each that isn't too hard to do 
So to get to change that, you can just swap out one unexpected courage and one steward of Gondor. Or actually, you can have three steward of Gondors and two copies of core, but you need to replace uh, unexpected courage. But this is the deck as I have it, and it works pretty much as you expect. It is mainly a spirit deck, so we have the Song of Travel, and there's other songs in the other in the other deck. And the Song of Travel is to go on to the hero that gets attacked with Steward of Gondor. And you are to basically quest and use your buffing power through your other marks to buff all the other characters. And most of the work is actually done by the other deck. This deck is just to fill people up and sort of uh, buff people and take a bit of punishment and do questing and that's pretty much it and do threat management okay so there's a lot of threat management you can see we have the three greetings which are designed to be cast upon your opponent you've got sneak attacking Gandalfs and you've also got the new card which is Elrond's Council now the deck doesn't do much Okay, this is a perfect example of a deck that, and there's there's sort of like a division in the community about how to build co-op decks. This get deck would not function by itself, as you can see. It's a sole support deck, but of course it doesn't have to function by itself. It's designed to work specifically with another deck, and so it works fine. So what we're looking at here is we have our targets. We have do Duodain Warning. The target for Duodain Warning is, of course, our hero. And what I mean by that, I, of course, mean this dude. Okay. So we want to get him buffed up. He's already getting plus one from her, so we can actually buff him another three, which means it is very conceivable that we have by you know mid game on a good day like on an average day i should say he is three from the other hero he is one from eowyn and say let's say another two so he's a plus six defense hero with sentinel untappable and can hit anyone on the board it's pretty insane then we have of course duodane cache and the duodane cache is meant to be cast upon the other deck to give other heroes range so they can range attack us and then we have the sentinel and there's two sentinels in here and why are these cards in here and really this this card these cards are just here to get that combo happening quicker and what that means is we might not be able to find Erwin until right at the end of our deck so by having another two we just increase the chances of getting sentinel on uh, Elra here these cards are deadish. They could actually be quite easily replaced, but you do not want to be playing this deck and not get Sentinel on him because it defeats the whole purpose. So it's really uh, a needed card. Next, we have the Unexpected Courages. Now, they're obviously extremely powerful. And we have the Song of Travel, which goes upon him as well. And we've got Burning Brand, which goes upon him as well. And I think everything else is pretty self-explanatory. Uh, Westworld Traveller. Now, a lot of people underestimate Westworld Traveller. They look at this ability and they think, well, this ability isn't really that cool. But actually, it, who cares? <laughs> it's two quest for two will. That is pretty good. Okay, two points for two will. Great little questing tune. And it has an option, optional ability that we can use if we wish. But that two quest, two uh, cost for two will is extremely good. The only card that comes close is uh, Hammersmith, who is two for two, but also he can actually be buffed to three because of the uh, Dane. I'm pretty sure it's Hammersmith. I, I should check that. Uh, Uh, blah, 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 blah. No, there you go. I'm, I was wrong. So he is two for one, but with Dane, he becomes two for two. So he has the same, in a way, the same kind of power. Okay, so that is this deck. It's a very, very simple deck. 
so let's just drag all that off and let's have a look at the next deck do 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 Okay. Okay, so let's have a look at this deck. Now this deck is a little interesting. This is uh, actually a variation that I was playing with just recently. Uh, it's basically an eagle deck, okay? So it's basically all about the eagles, okay? So, and you all know the eagles of the Misty Mountains and support of the eagle, eagles crazy 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 abilities okay and now basically what this means is that if you're running this deck correctly you will have this song of battle upon that other hero who can already get quite comfortably up to say six defense and then you can get him to quite easily get another four. So he can defend at 10, Sentinel untapping, awesome. And that also gives Ar uh, Legolas the ability to attack for six a turn. And if you get him on, uh, if you get, you know, the third one on the other guy, you can then attack for, uh, what, six, 12, 12 a turn just off one side of the board. So. That's pretty much the crux of it. It's a, basically an Eagles deck. Now, the only real thing to note here is we only have one copy of Halidor, one copy of Rimmer Smart, one copy, one copy, one copy. What's the deal here? Is there any point of having a single copy of a card? Well, no. Not if you're planning to use it as part of your deck engine. But these cards aren't got anything to do with our deck engine. Okay? This card here is part of our deck engine. So we have three copies to increase the chance of its draw, right? This card is crucial to our deck ending, so we have two copies. But these cards, these all these little heroes over here, they're all basically, any of these draws are good, okay? We have a card that you probably will never ever cast. You might even discard this through Protector of Lorien. We have a one cost hero that quests for one, that attacks for one. It's very, very cost effective and he has a very good ability. It's not as good in multiplayer, but still very good. We have an extremely powerful uh, hero in Gildor. And we have Haldor, which is another extremely powerful hero. Any of those draws are good. So you think of those four cards as one card, okay? Think of them as four copies of the one card, and then when you're thinking about your chances of drawing, you're basically saying, we'll draw one of these cards, we don't care which. Meanwhile, we've got one copy of Hammersmith, and our Hammersmith is a card that I just can't live without. I love this card, I just think he's great, but I use him like an event, as in I do not cast him. If I have him in my hand, unless I'm absolutely forced to, I never ever use him. I only cast him if there's an opportunity to use his ability. So often sometimes it's a dead card, but at the same time, I prefer to have it. And that's why there's only one copy, because he's not really integral to this deck, but he's just a very good, handy thing to have. And the same for the Mine of the Iron Hills. Now the condition attachments are extremely powerful and uh, there's many quests that have them, and I just find uh, that the Miner is an extremely good card as well. So that's pretty much the crux of this deck. We have some healing, we've got some attacking. It's got everything we need. Horn of Gondor, of course, combos perfectly with uh, Vassal of the Windlords. And we have the Rivendell Blade to increase the ability of our characters to attack. And of course, if we look at our heroes, he is a Noldor. And he is a Sylvian, so he can be cast on both of those heroes. We've already talked about support of the Eagles. Now, Rivendell Bow, interesting character, interesting card. Okay, again, to give ranged, but it also gives plus one attack to Legolas. So, first copy goes on Eladan, second copy goes on Legolas. Now, what else have we got? 
We've got some marks to get us to get Burning Brand. We want to get Burning Brand upon Elrenor. And this is the card that uh, I've been playing with recently. Now, this is a very strange card. I can't tell whether it's good or not, so I've just started putting it in my decks to see how it goes. So basically, what you want to do is you want to get to the state. It works extremely well with Dane Ironfoot because he never taps. But you have him on a hero, and as long as that hero is not attacking, he continually gets buffed. Because what happens is, say this card is on Legolas and he's attacking every turn. This guy's getting a, a counter every turn. You have the same card. You have keeping count on another hero who hasn't done any attacking. He could very conceivably be attacking for like 15 by the end of the game. Which means if something really scary comes out like a troll, you can actually one-shot it every single time. Extremely good card, but I have yet to see whether it's actually functional. But that's pretty much how the deck is structured and how the deck works. We're, the whole thing is centered around that untapped block mechanic and using range through the Eagles deck to beef up your attack powers. So while I was doing this video though, I did notice something a little bit funny. And that is... Uh, we actually have three ranged here and we have two ranged here. So that's five ranged cards. So what I am going to do is I'm going to say just on the fly, let's remove one of these completely. So we actually have four ranged. And of course, that reason we have four is because it's integral to the deck and replace, we're going to replace that with a second spirit song, which we're going to put here okay and that's going to be the change and that's pretty much the deck so yeah that's pretty awesome i am now going to uh run this and see how it goes okay well i will see you guys next time